What's going on, gardeners? It's Saturday, December 17th, and the end of the year is upon us here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. That's why on today's video, I want to share with you nine different veggies that you have probably never grown before to grow in 2023 for the most exciting garden season of your life. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications, and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear, your support is greatly appreciated. Every single spring, summer, fall, and winter, I like to grow one new crop in my vegetable garden because it keeps me stimulated and excited and always learning new things by trying new things in my garden. And it helps keep us getting locked in this boring cycle of growing the exact same things year in and year out. So what I've done in this video is I've put together a list of nine things that are not rare. They are very easy for you to find and source. It's just most people have haven't grown these things and they're really easy and fun to grow and they will make gardening more exciting for you as well because you'll be trying new things. So what I've done is I've organized these things all by timeline. So we're going to start with the most cold hardy stuff that we need to start from seed first and then we'll move all the way to the warm weather stuff that needs to be started latest. So you'll be able to create your own list on a timeline fashion of these awesome veggies. The first veggie to grow in your vegetable garden this year are shallots. Shallots are awesome. They are the base of so many different things that we cook with, but they're rarely used because they're really expensive. In the grocery store, they can be as much as a dollar a piece. But lucky for us, we can get a package of hundreds of shallot seeds for only a few dollars. I've messed around with shallot sets for years and they never bulb for me properly, but last year I planted them from seed and I had fantastic success. In fact, I still have bags of these shallots left over and I'll make sure to link to a video above that shows you how to grow them, cure them, and store them because they last for many months and I will be able to eat these glorious shallots all throughout the winter. Shallots are part of the allium family, so they're in the same family as onions, garlic, and leeks, and as such, they are very cold hardy. I have found the best way to grow shallots is from seed. You start them in transplant trays indoors in the winter, and they're one of the first seeds you're going to sow, and they're one of the first transplants that you're going to get out into your garden. I found the best time to start your shallots from seed is the same time that you plant your bulbing onions. So you want to time them so they hit maturity right around the summer solstice because that is when day length is maximum. So when the days are longest, you will get the maximum amount of bulbing. And I did this and it worked out fantastic for me last year. So I started my shallot seeds on January 15th and I transplanted them out into my garden on March 1st and that was the perfect time. That is going to work for the the overwhelming majority of people out there. If you're in a very cold zone where your ground stays frozen for a long period of time, you may have to play with that by two to four weeks or so, but that should give you a very general timeline. You don't want to put these out too late or else they will mature too late and then they won't bulb sufficiently. The same thing goes for you guys that are much further south than me. You may want to start them a little bit earlier, but you don't want to get them into the ground so early that they hit maturity long before the summer solstice because then they may not bulb properly. So for me, again, starting seeds in mid-January and getting them out in early March seems to be perfect. The second veggie that you should try growing in your garden this year are leeks. Leeks are also a member of the allium family, just like shallots, and they grow very similarly. However, you eat leeks for the greenery and they generally don't bulb. So because of that, you can actually plant leeks all throughout the year. These are some leeks that I grew from seed. I started them probably about a month or so ago. They're getting to the point where they're ready to transplant out into my garden. However, I am going to start more leek seed when I start my shallot and onion seed. So you can sow your leek seed transplants at the exact same time. Growing leeks from seed is the best way to grow leeks if you want a whole garden full of leeks. However, if you only want a handful of leeks, you can actually plant the cut ends of leeks from grocery stores and they will grow just fine. I showed you how to do this just recently on how you can grow leeks from the cuttings from grocery stores. And I'll make sure to link to that video above, but these leeks that you see here, here, and right here, they are simply the planted ends of grocery store cuttings. And I have three more right here from some grocery store leeks that I just bought, they will go into the ground as well. So there are several ways that you can grow leeks. Veggies number three and four are one that the South loves and one that the North loves. And they are mustard greens and rapini, also known as broccoli rabe. 
Now, just a little while ago, I made a video all about these two wonderful veggies and I was raving about them. And I'll make sure to link to that video above, but here is a very brief summary. Both of these crops like very similar cool weather conditions, so you can basically sow them and transplant them on the same timeline. Now, where I live in zone eight, you can grow both all throughout the winter, but if you live in a much colder zone, they may be considered more of an early spring crop for you. Here I have some mustard greens that are doing absolutely fantastic in my garden. And here I have a nice bed of broccoli rob that is also doing absolutely fantastic. And believe it or not, it's only 55 degrees today, but it's actually bolting. Broccoli rob is very prone to bolting. So you want to make sure that you get both of these crops in in the early spring after the really severe freezes stop, but they can still take hard freezes down to the low to mid 20s without too much of a problem. So for me in my garden, I'm going to start new transplants in mid January and get them out in early March because generally that's when things start warming up and it's still cool enough that they won't bolt but most of the really severe freezes that we could potentially get will be far beyond us. If you're north of me you may need to modify that timeline by about two or three weeks. Same story if you're south of me. The fifth veggie is a cool weather tolerant determinant tomato that will grow well in a container. Now this may come as a surprise to you but it will dramatically increase the productivity of your garden over the summer. The typical way that most gardeners grow tomatoes is they start their tomato seeds usually for indeterminate varieties of tomatoes about six to eight weeks before their last chance of frost date and then they wait for them to become mature enough transplants and then plant them out once all chance of frost is passed and then about 80 days later they'll get their very first tomato and that's great if you're willing to wait until July to get your very first homegrown tomato but if you do that you're wasting so much of the good spring weather. A better strategy is to get your hands on some seed for determinate and dwarf tomato varieties that really enjoy cool weather and then start some seeds about six weeks before you would normally start your tomato transplants. And your goal should be to get the transplants large enough that you can plant them out in small fabric grow bags or other small containers about six weeks before your last chance of frost. That's because once you get about six weeks before your last chance of frost date, you will dramatically start seeing a reduction in the amount of freezing nights and then you can just grow those tomatoes in containers and then just carry them inside if you're going to get one or two freezes per week the other nights will be comfortably above freezing and you can basically just let them outside without worry of them getting killed and this is what I've done right here. I have a dwarf tomato project variety called Rosella Purple, and you can see it's already loading up with fruit, and I'm growing this out on my sunroom right now. This is a number seven grow bag. You can see how small and light this is. This is as big as this tomato will ever get. So this will be incredibly easy for you to just start two or three of them, and then just carry them into your garage in March or February to get a massive head start on the season. I have had incredible success doing this in seasons past and I've shown you how to do this and it works absolutely fantastic. Now for me, I normally start my tomato seeds the very first week of February and then I transplant them out into my garden either the last week of March or the first week of April depending on the type of season that we're having and the weather forecast and then I'm able to get my very first tomatoes somewhere around June 1st. However, using this trick, I've been able to get fully ripe tomatoes in my garden as early as April, and they taste fantastic. And another variety that does very well is a variety called Solettes. This is a cool weather bred tomato that was made to grow in coastal Oregon, where it never really gets above 70 degrees. So it absolutely loves the cool weather of spring. So these transplants right here are already taking off for me, and I want to have these ready for me to plant out into grow bags, probably in early February. That way I can bring them outside in March and I can get tomatoes by April. And this works incredibly well. Now, if you're a plum tomato type person, another great determinant variety is Margarita VF Hybrid. This also 
can handle really cool weather. So I hope this encourages you to think a little bit differently because these plants are really small and light. So if you start two or three of these, you'll easily be able to carry them inside on the odd freezing night in early spring. And this will give you a huge head start by months on your tomato harvests. The six veggie that you should try growing in your garden in 2023 are white potatoes. White potatoes are one of the easiest vegetables that you can grow, yet so few people grow them. White potatoes are actually part of the nightshade family, so they are related to tomatoes, peppers, and eggplant. And all you need to do to grow a white potato is to get yourself some potatoes, keep them in your pantry until they sprout, and then once they sprout, you just bury them six inches into the ground, cover them up with dirt or compost, and each of these sprouts will grow into a new potato plant. Potatoes love cool weather, so the best time to plant seed potatoes is about two weeks before your last frost date. That's because while potatoes themselves, the vegetation is frost and freeze sensitive, the ground will actually insulate the potato and prevent any damage if you get any late frost, because at that point, the ground will no longer freeze through. And you wanna get them in as early as possible because you want them to grow when the spring is still cool before the really hot summer temperatures come. When grown commercially, potatoes are sown in very, very long rows. However, for the backyard gardener, I actually find the easiest way to grow potatoes is in one of these 20 gallon grow bags because it confines all of the potatoes to this easy to harvest pot instead of you having to dig up all the potatoes in an endless earth bed and you always will miss many potatoes. So to harvest these potatoes that I actually grew from sprouting potatoes in my pantry, all you have to do is pick them up and dump them. And look at that, those are some pretty nice russet potatoes in there. Now, generally speaking, when selecting potatoes for planting, you either want to go to a grocery store and buy organic potatoes, or you want to order some seed potatoes because conventional potatoes are sprayed by an inhibiting chemical that prevents sprouting. However, eventually the chemical does wear off. And this is a conventional potato that is sprouting in my pantry. If you check your pantry and you see any of your potatoes sprouting like this, you can plant them. The seventh type of veggie that you must grow in your garden in 2023 are pickling type cucumbers. Now I know many of you are already probably growing cucumbers in your garden, but the pickling type cucumbers are a great way to get a humongous jumpstart on the growing season. That's because pickling cucumbers can have days to maturity as little as 40 days. If you've been following my channel for a few years, you know that I've been raving season after season over the varieties of cucumber, bait alpha, and china jade. That's because these super productive varieties of cucumbers are parthenocarpic. Most varieties of cucumbers require pollination in order to hold their fruit. So under most varieties of cucumbers conditions, you have to have a pollinator fly from a male flower and then transfer that pollen to the female flower. And then once that female flower is pollinated, only then will it hold that fruit and carry it to maturity. Otherwise it will turn yellow, shrivel up and drop. The wonderful thing about the bait alpha and china jade varieties is they don't require pollination to hold their fruit. And if the female flowers are not fertilized, they actually will produce completely seedless fruit. So they are super productive. However, they are still full size, actually very large cucumbers, and they can take 50 to 60 days to reach maturity. Well, I am super excited to report that this summer, I'm going to be growing a very special type of pickling cucumber called party time. It is a hybrid type cucumber that is extremely disease resistant and can produce fruits in as little as about 40 days or so. And they bear cucumbers in clusters of four. So it is going to be incredibly productive. And it is also parthenocarpic. So it can produce completely seedless fruit and it doesn't require pollination. So I think it is going to have outstanding production and I can't wait to grow it. Now, when it comes to timing your cucumbers, that is a little bit different than most of your warm weather vegetables. That's because plants like peppers and tomatoes are subtropical and they don't mind really cool nights as long as it doesn't frost or freeze. And the transplanting process takes a long time. So when it comes to a tomato or pepper, you have to start them about two months ahead of time and then get them out immediately after your last chance of frost. Not the case with cucumbers. Cucumbers are tropical and they don't like cool temperatures at all. So you actually don't want to get your transplants out into the garden until about two to three weeks 
after your last frost date because you want those nighttime lows to get up to be about 50 degrees or warmer consistently. Cucumber transplants are also ready for transplant about three weeks after you sow the seed. They germinate on a seedling heat mat in only about two to three days. So if you're starting your cucumber seedlings on a seedling heat mat, which you should always do, you really need to start those cucumber seeds only about one week before your last chance of frost. Then they will be ready to transplant out into your garden about three weeks after your last chance of frost where it should be considerably warmer. And at that point, I should be picking a variety like the party time only about five to six weeks after transplant. So this is going to greatly up my cucumber game and I'm going to have the earliest cucumbers of my life this season if everything goes according to plan. The eighth new veggie for you to try growing in your garden in 2023 is the Kahari melon. The Kahari melon is a really fantastic, super sweet, small melon that can grow in areas previously thought it's not warm enough to grow melons because they mature so quickly. Now, several months ago, I made a video all about the Kahari melon, and if you wanna see that, I will make sure to link to that above. But the short of it is this. They are small, personal size melons, or they, they can feed two as well, and they grow to mature very quickly. So if you live in a climate where it's not warm enough to grow melons or if you have a really bad problem with pests like I do, these are a great melon to grow because they mature so quickly that they can get in before the vine borers start and the pickle worms start. So you can have mature melons in early spring before the pest pressure gets really bad. Now just like all cucurbits, the Kahari melon is very cold sensitive so you need to treat them like you would your cucumbers and not rush them out into your garden. You want to transplant them about two to three weeks after your last chance of frost so the nighttime lows can get a little bit warmer to keep them comfortable. So just like your cucumbers, you don't need to sow those seeds until about a week before your last chance of frost. Started on a seedling heat mat, they should germinate in about three days and they will be ready for transplant in about three weeks or so. They are super easy to grow and they also do great growing vertically up a trellis. And the ninth veggie that you must grow in your garden in 2023 and expand your horizons are sweet potatoes. Last year, I put together a comprehensive tutorial on how you can grow sweet potatoes from sweet potato slips. You need to check that out so you can get a big jump start on your season. But the short of it is this, sweet potatoes are not actually a potato at all. They are in the morning glory family. So they're actually the tuber of a morning glory type plant. Sweet potatoes are extremely tropical and they want the nights to be comfortably in the 50 degree range before you plant them out into your garden. They love hot, humid, wet summers. They have very few pests and very few problems with disease. All you need to do to grow sweet potatoes is about two months before you want to plant them out into your garden, you get yourself a sweet potato from the grocery store that hasn't been irradiated or treated, so organic is best, and then start them in potting mix like I did last year, and then they will produce slips, and you can plant those slips directly into the garden. I'm already overwintering one of the slips from my Okinawan sweet potato because I'm going to get a big jump start on the season this year. These vines right here are individual slips. You just break them off at the node and you plant them in the garden. And about four to six months later, assuming you have a long, warm and humid, wet summer that they just love and you give them enough fertilizer, you will be rewarded with a huge haul of delicious sweet potatoes. And that right there are nine new veggies that you must try growing in your garden in 2023. Now, I tried to keep each individual entry here short and sweet and give you some detail but not get too far into detail. So make sure that you click the cards that I've placed at each individual video to help give you uh, more information on how to grow those plants because I've made complete guides on growing them in the past. That being said, if you have any specific questions, please ask them down in the comments below and I will do my best to respond if you need any individual attention. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful and it inspires you to grow new things in the upcoming growing season. If you did find it helpful, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products I use in real life in my garden, they are all linked down below in my Amazon storefront in the video description. So expand the description and click the Amazon link for everything I use in real life. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video.
Dale wanted to show everybody his handsome new fancy Christmas sweater. Just look at him, all decked out for the holidays with his happy little Christmas sweater. What? You look really cute. You don't have to be frustrated about it. We're not making fun of you. I wish I were as handsome as you. Look at that boy. Who could say no to that face? He's going to get so many presents in a couple of days. Whoa, that's a growl of excitement.